I bought the fruit business and orphan cart off uh, Frank Ridley. He used to live in Langley, top of Nancy Field, or say opposite the uh, the joiner shop. His, I think it'd be his brother-in-law that was the joiner, and he had the horse and cart there. I bought that off him in about 45 I think 45 or 46 but I, although I came round the street for nine years I was getting to know the fruit trade I didn't know how to the butcher my trade and uh, when I got the experience I said to my wife well I don't want that it's the wrong side of business I want to be in wholesale so I then got fit up in wholesale and uh, I gave my business away to uh, a brother-in-law of mine, Loden Fentiman. You must have had some experiences then when you were on Austin Cart. It was right. about us, what, did, what, did, what, did it come with business? Us? Oh yeah, but you couldn't take it out at shafts. Earlier on in its life, I think Frank had loaned it to uh, somebody locally to do a bit of scuffling, you know, pull it scuffler. And whoever it was, but they took the chain off the scuffler and threw it forward rather than walk up with it. And it dropped across the back of the horse's legs. And of course it set off like a top it up. Everything was churning up at the back of it, but it it ran a fair distance and they did get it but ever after that when you rattle the chain at the back of it for the thing that off <laughs> aye you didn't tell me that when I was buying it like I wouldn't have bought the dash thing it could have been a serious thing in the street you know if, if you just rattle the chain it set off and one of the chains was still fastened to the cart because the toe is seen and it, that's what happened one that got and they threw it up before they got other off, off or off, and of course the uh, scuffle or whatever it was were just rolling round till it broke the chain or whatever they did. I had a horse stable, top of the street had the horse stable there, so I took it up there and uh, we used to stable the horse there, and the car we built a shed for it in front of the house, and then when we were bringing it down on the morning to put it in the you have to used to walk straight down and up the step it put its two front feet up the step and it used to push the door open if it were just a jar and it would whinny and all it wanted was a slice of bread he'd give it a slice of bread and it would back off its step and come to where it wanted to go it can't and you could always put it in easy but it couldn't get it out We'd done all sorts when we were getting it out but I knew I was successful in breaking it out of habit. On a Friday night, I'd finish at the solicitor house at Middleton Lane End, round about nine o'clock time, and that served the, I'd go get the order and make it home, take it back to house. As soon as I'd gone back to house with it, well, the house just set off and come home. <laughs> you have stood it. And she would say, everything's to you, Mr. Mark. I'll have a drink to you, yeah. <laughs> and I'd have a drink of tea when I'd gone horse had gone <laughs> and it used to walk home and just stand in front of my own house So what made you finally pack up with horse and get a vehicle? Oh well I mean it was progress I, I was doing a little bit more business than what I was when I started and uh, I could say that if I got a van I could go round these uh, places, little farms, you know, they're all market gardeners out there, picking stuff up that I wanted, and I suppose getting it to a better price, or you didn't know whether you got it to a better price, it was just... I bought a directorship in a, a leech company. I got appointed the buying director, so I was free to move about in the country as I wanted, and just do the buying and I turned that company from a loss to a damn good profit 
and you get cross arguments when you get new members on board and stuff like that, you know. Tell I just I've had enough of this, I'm going home, finished. And I came home and uh, by that time I'd got a couple of stalls on South Emsel Market so I could I could eat a living if I wanted, you know. Which I did. And I used to say, Well, I don't want to look for bargains, I want to look for friends. <laughs> <laughs>